going to do a documentary at Taman Botani we ask about what is the definition of core data. Core data is basically an animal that belongs to phylum core data, which is a part of Deuterostom kingdom. Organisms that in Deuterostom kingdom have a distinct characteristic, for example, that animals will develop before their mouth in early embryonic stage. The phylum core data includes a wide range of organisms as it comprises of all vertebrates, which as organisms we have a backbones, and in vertebrates, that is organisms that have no backbones. So for today, we are going to use horses, that is a vertebra, as our example for this explanation details about the core data. Now talk about habitats, everyone must be thinking that horses live in the field, right? So I can say this can be correct and wrong. For domestic or tame horses, they live in almost any habitat. But for wild horses, they prefer plains, paradise and steppes for many reasons. Horses need wide open space for defense purpose, and they need some shelter like trees or cliff to protect them from the elements. So as you know, any tetanus is made out of horse body, right? So let me give an example. The tetanus toxic suspension is injected into the horse body. The body of the horse will produce anti-tetanus. Then it injected to individual with a high risk of tetanus. Individual will be protected by the tetanus infection. So horses not only can bring medical value on science side, but it also can bring health and physical side. On study committed by the British Horse Society found that horseback riding is indeed a good vascular workout. Even just a half hour of riding is considered moderate exercise, said BHS PR executive Megan Hawks, while floating extra is more energy than playing a badminton. Horses taxonomy can be divided into several classifications, which is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. For kingdom is animalia, for phylum is chordata, class is mammalia, order is perisodactyla, family is equidae, for genus is equus, and lastly species is equus cabellus. Next, we move on to the life cycle of horses. The first stage of horses is foals. They sit in their mother belly for 11 months. They can walk and run after a few hours from birth. The second stage is yearling. It is between 1 to 2 years old. The third stage is called for male baby and the filly for female baby. The fourth stage is stallion for male and mares for male adult. And the last stage is senior horse. Horses can live up to 25 years. 20 years of horses is equal to 60 years of human. This plant is called the bird's nest fern or simply nest fern. It also goes by the scientific name which is Asplenium nidus. As you can see, the leaf of this bird's nest fern looks similar to banana leaves and can grow up to 50 to 150 centimeters long and 10 to centimeters broad. They are light green, often crinkled with a black midrib and exhibit circinate vernation. As you can see, spores develop in sorry which is a cluster of sporangia on the other side of the fronts. This sorry from long rows extending up from the midrib 
on the back of the outer part of the lamina. For the taxonomy, the kingdom is Plantae, division Polyporiophyta, class Polyporiopsida, order Polypodialis. Family Asplenacea, genus Asplenium, and the species is Asplenium nidus. The pathogenic microbes associated with the species is Pseudomonas sicori. It is a gram-negative soil bacterium which can cause leaf blighting and spotting. Blight is a rapid and complete chlorosis which can cause the insufficient chlorophyll and browning of the leaves. The ideal environment for this bacteria to grow is in warm and humid areas, so any moisture on the leaves are prone to this disease. Asplenium nidus can survive either as an epiphyte or terrestrial plant, but typically grows on an organic matter. This fern often lives in palm trees where it collects water and hummus in its leaf rosette. It thrives in warm, humid areas in partial to full shade. It dislikes direct sunlight and likes to be full shade on the north facing garden wall. The fern do not produce seeds, woods or flowers. They reproduce using spores and are pollinated and dispersed by wind. Their leaves are known as fronds and in some species can grow to over 5 meter long. The life cycle of the fern. Clusters of sporangia grow on the undersurface of mature fern leaves. Released from its spore case, the haploid spore is carried to the ground where it germinates into a tiny, usually heart-shaped gametophyte anchored to the ground by rhizoids. Under moist conditions, mature sperms are released from the arthridia and swim to the egg producing archegonia that have formed from the gametocyte's lowered surface. When fertilization occurs, a zygote forms and develops into embryo within the archegonium. The embryo eventually grows larger than the gametophyte and becomes a sporophyte. Mosses are non-flowering plants which produce spores and have stems, stems and leaves but do not have true roots. Mosses and their cousins have live roots and horn roots are classified bryophytes in the plant kingdom. The mosses that we found here is called granite mosses which is usually found on rocks. Mosses are distributed throughout the world except in salt water and are commonly found in moist shady locations. Mosses grow in many places but prefer moist shady habitats. A few are aquatic especially water mosses grow in very dry places especially granite mosses like this. Common growth surfaces include rocks, trees, rotten woods, humus and soil. They are best known for those species that carpet woodland and forest floss. Mosses taxonomy can be divided into several classifications which is kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. For kingdom is plantae, for phylum is bryophyta, class is bryopsida, Order is Bryels, family is Bryaceae, the genus is Bryum hidu, and last for the species is Bryum haespitism hidu. The life cycle of most mosses begins with the release of spores from a capsule which opens when a small lid like structure called the operculum degenerates. A single spore germinates to form a branch filamentous protonema from which a leafy gametophyte develops. The gametophyte bears organs for sexual reproduction. Sperm, which are released by the major anterium, the male reproductive organ, are attracted into the neck of the archegonium, the female reproductive organ. Here, one sperm fuses with the egg to produce the zygote. After cell division, the zygote becomes the sporophyte and at the same time, the archegonium divides to form the protective elytra. The sporophyte usually consists of capsule and aceta. The sexual reproduction occurs within the capsule and the whole process may begin again. In herbal medicine, moss is most commonly used as a diuretic or as a cure for coughs depending on how the moss is processed and which moss is used. Irish moss is used for its mucilaginous and nutritional qualities. Sphenger moss has been used since ancient times as a dressing for wounds. Mosses can also be used in the treatment of various diseases such as acne, hemorrhoids, and skin diseases. Hello everyone, today we will be discussing about hibiscus. So hibiscus rosa sinensis, or commonly known as hibiscus, or maybe the dainty flower, is a flowering plant that belongs to the family Malvasia, also known as Mallow family. 
The hibiscus flowers are large and showy and the genus grows into herbs, shrubs or small trees. There are more than 100 species found that are used throughout the world as food and medicine. Now let's discuss about the habitat of hibiscus. So the genus thrives in warm, temperate, tropical and subtropical regions throughout the world. The plants follow a perennial or annual life cycle. The taxonomy of hibiscus include kingdom, class, order, family, genus, species. For kingdom is a plantae, for class is a magnoliopsida, for order is malvales and for family is malvasia and genus is hibiscus and lastly the species is a rosa sinensis species. For the life cycle for the hibiscus rosa sinensis, like all angiosperms, is a sporophyte dominant, meaning that the multicellular diploid is the most prevalent. The life cycle starts when the sporophyte undergoes meiosis to produce haploid cells. The haploid cell then develops into a gametophyte. The gametophyte then undergoes mitosis to produce gametes. One of the gametes is then fertilized and forms a zygote. The zygote undergoes mitosis to produce what we see as the flower of this sporophyte uh, portion of the plant. Right. As well as that, the hibiscus rosa sinensis contains heterospores, meaning that the plant contains uh, microspores and also as well as megaspores that are produced via meiosis. The microspores make male gametophytes and the megaspores make the female gametophytes. Moving on to the medical benefits and the medical value of hibiscus. Several human trials have found that hibiscus beverages and supplements can decrease blood pressure. A study in 46 adults with high blood pressure found that drinking two cups, that is 474 ml, of hibiscus tea daily for one month combined with lifestyle and as well as dietary changes reduces blood pressure significantly over more than the lifestyle and diet changes alone. Other studies have found that hibiscus extracts may be as effective as pharmaceutical um, medications for high blood pressure too. However, more research is needed. Lastly, for the pathogenic associated um, microbes that is rated with hibiscus, this is the wilt disease. Uh, these wilt diseases are caused by pathogens in the soil that is specifically fusarium and as well as verticillium are common and attack other plants as well. Not just hibiscuses, this disease enters the plant through the roots and prevents the plant from moving nutrients and water through its system. Hibiscus plants wilt and die back suddenly, even if the soil is moist. Leaves are shriveled but not yellow. This disease is also sometimes called as the root rot too. So we are done with exploring the Taman Botani Negara Shah Alam. That is all from us. Bye! Bye. I'm Jasrina. Hi, I'm Hannah. And today we are going to do a documentary at Taman Negara. Taman Negara! Taman Negara! Three. So today we are going to do a documentary at Taman Botani Negara Shah Alam. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a horse that people play with Paris and steppers for many reasons. Horse <laughs> that So, I need chicken or duck? Okay guys, we've been at Tamabotini for 5 hours from 8 to 1pm and finally we finished! <laughs> <laughs> Irina and Captain already <laughs> Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Alright, so we are done with exploring. Um